Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys five essential effects that you can use in DaVinci Resolve 16 to modify your videos. So the first effect I want to show you guys is over in the effects library under open effects. So put up right here at the top is the blur resolve effects, and there are many different options for doing blurs. We'll talk about three in this video. So the first and probably the most basic kind of blur is a Gaussian blur. So to apply one of these open effects to a clip, you simply left click, hold, and drag your effect onto the clip that's in the timeline. As you can see, with the Gaussian blur, what happens is that the entire clip is blurred out in an evenly distributed manner. So there's no direction for this blur. It simply takes everything on the clip, decreases its sharpness, and makes it harder to see clearly exactly what is in the shot. So with all open effects, you can click on the video clip and go to the inspector, and then a new tab will be created if the clip has a open effects attached. And that's, of course, called OpenFX. So one thing you might see when you add a Gaussian blur is this black line on the sides. The reason there is extra black space at the top and bottom is just that this clip didn't conform to the sizing of the other clips. And uh, that's why there's this black space. But if you want to remove this black border, one thing you could do is change the border type to replicate, which is going to fill in that black space on the sides and maybe a more preferred look. So also, if you want to increase the strength of your blur, you can increase the horizontal strength and the vertical strength. And of course, if you want to make the blur stronger so that it's even harder to see what is in the shot, you can increase the horizontal and vertical strength. Now, while gang is checked, these two are going to be locked in place together. So if you want to change the strength separately, you can uncheck gang and you can, let's say, lower the vertical strength, which is going to give you a different look to the blur. Note that like most properties in DaVinci, resolve you can add keyframes to your open effects in order to animate their values over time so if you wanted to have a slow gradual blur as the shot enters or leaves you could use keyframing there but i have many other videos on how to do keyframing so i'm not really going to touch on it here so the two other types of blurs that i wanted to mention are the radio blur and the zoom blur so let's drag radio blur onto the shot and the basic idea is the same. We're making things a lot harder to view visually. But you'll notice that with a radial blur, that it has a center point. And you can see that if you have the open effects overlay toggled on, which you can also adjust around the screen wherever you want that center point to be. And around that center point, everything that gets further and further out becomes progressively more blurry. And also the blur goes around in a circular fashion, like a CD or a DVD disc. And uh, you can see how that blur just ends up looking differently as a result, because it's no longer spreading evenly and plainly across the entire clip, but rather it has a focus point. So in open effects, we can adjust the position of that center point, which gives the same results as just dragging it around manually. And we can also increase the smoothing strength if we want there to be more blur and for what's visible to be harder to see. Can also change the border type to replicate if we don't want to have any of these black zones. Okay, so one last type of blur, very similar, is zoom blur. So the zoom blur also has a focus point, but the blur doesn't go around in a circle. Rather, the blur goes straight out like a ray of light from the center point. And uh, just like before, we can drag the center point around the screen. So as we do, you can see where the rays of blurriness are shooting out from. Likewise, on open effects, we can adjust the smoothing strength if we want things to be more blurry, change the border type to replicate if you want to fill in those side spaces, and we can move the white position as well if we choose. So that is three of the types of blurs you can use in Resolve. Of course, you have others here like box blur and directional blur, uh, but these are the three I find myself using the most. So go ahead and play around with all of them. It's basically the same idea, just blurriness with a different pattern to how it achieves that blur effect. So the second effect I want to demonstrate in this video is the vignette. So we can also find vignette in open effects if we scroll down towards the bottom under stylize. It's right here next to watercolor. So we can drag the vignette onto our clip. And what you're going to notice is that by default, the center of the area is still going to be mostly visible, but everything around that is going to be hidden by this ring, where as it approaches the outer edges, it's going to become darker and darker. So the vignette can be used for various things. One is to emphasize the visual information in an area of the shot, the center by default. But another option could be to create a spotlight effect where you can only see 
part of a stage, or possibly looking through a lens such as a telescope or binoculars. So in OpenFX, we can modify the settings here. So for instance, if you do not like this blurriness and you'd rather have a sharper edge between the black space and the visible space, then you can decrease the softness, which will dramatically decrease the distance where there is a blur, and instead it just transitions to the darkness very fast. Uh, you can also adjust the anamorphism if you want to change the shape of your vignette, and you can increase or decrease the size of your vignette to be as big or small as you want it to be. If we put operating mode on advanced, we also get access to change the shape of the vignette, so it does not have to be an oval. It can be many different shapes, such as a rectangle or a hexagon. And you can also adjust the position of the vignette. So if you want it to be on the left or at the top of your screen, you can do that as well. If you check my channel, I also have a fuller video on the vignette effect showing you how you can actually animate all of these settings with the keyframes as well. So go check that out if you're interested. The third effect I wanna demonstrate here is light rays. So in this scene, you can see that there are many different potential sources of light. And if you want to exaggerate that, you can add light rays onto your clip. So light rays are gonna take any bright spots of your video clip and add, as the name would imply, a ray of light um, coming out of that location. So you might notice that all of these light rays are being created from a center point. So the ones over here on the right are kind of pointing outwards this way. And then on the left, they go this way, which would imply the center point is actually above in the center of the clip. So if we zoom out and I was to switch the viewer overlay mode to open effects overlay so that we could see where that light is, you can see this little icon indicating a light for the open effects. So with this icon, we can actually drag this around and change the location where the light rays are going to emanate from which is very handy. Now, of course, you can adjust the position setting for this and other settings and open effects as well. So you can have redirections from a location, which is this default, the location is this light, but you can also choose at an angle. So if you want them all to be going the same direction, you can change the angle here, and then all of the light rays will go in the exact same direction. Of course, you can also adjust how the light rays will look, such as the length of those light rays, how sharp or blurry they should be. So if you decrease the softness, they're gonna be much more obvious, and you can increase the brightness if you really want them to stand out on the screen. There's also other modes for your ray drop-off, such as changing it to CCD Bloom or CCD Bloom Harsh, which is going to have a very different look to it. There's also one more mode for the source of rays up here. So by default, the rays come out of your bright regions, which is probably what you're going to want in most cases, but you can also have them come from edges on your video screen. So anywhere that has a very obvious edge here is going to receive light rays. So if we look at the original shot, you can see this really obvious line for the highway marker. And if we put it in edges mode, you can see that that ends up becoming one of the locations uh, that emanates the light rays. So a couple of use cases for this might be when you really want to emphasize the lighting in the screen, or if you want to, in a sense, blind your viewers, which could be something like an angel descending from the sky, it tends to look very blurry and there's lots of light everywhere. So adding light rays onto an angel shot like that might help to emphasize the nature of the scene. So let's move on to our fourth effect, which is mirrors. So mirrors, we can find this in the open effects as well. So down here into stylize, we can drag this onto our clip. And as you might imagine, mirrors is going to reflect part of your clip across an axis to the other side. So like the light rays effect, there's also gizmos that appear on the screen when you have the open effects overlay added on to your mirrors effect. So for instance, we can left click on the center point, which is going to be basically the anchor for the mirror. So for instance, we can left click on the mirror and drag the position away from the center of the clip if we choose. We can click on this handle to rotate it around the screen. So if you want your mirror to be uh, possibly top to bottom and instead of left to right, you can do that as well. Likewise, flipping it again to the top of the screen so we could mirror the ocean across the water. And we can also add an additional mirrors. So if we go to open effects, you'll see mirror two, mirror three, so on and so forth up to mirror six. So we can enable a mirror and this will once again appear at the center of the screen like the first one did. And we can just continue to rotate it if we so choose. And you'll notice that whenever we change these properties with the gizmos, it's also reflected over here in the inspector. So likewise, we can adjust the properties in the inspector as well if we choose to do that. Uh, but generally using these open effects overlays is gonna make it a little bit more visual and uh, I think easier to understand from a visual perspective. So one possible 
thing you could do with this is if you have a drone shot of a landscape with a lot of sky space, you can mirror the bottom to the top of the sky just for a cool fantasy effect having mirrored worlds in a sense. Other people like to do that on YouTube. And it could also be used as part of an animated transition from one scene to another if you wanted something to really stand out. So one last thing about the mirrors, there's other modes for mirrors as well. So rather than individual placement, you could change it to rosette or kaleidoscope. So one more thing about the mirrors effect, there's a couple other modes for mirror placement rosette and kaleidoscope so if you're looking for these kind of looks for your mirrors that would be a good place to start and likewise they have controls down below but you don't need to add in mirrors manually you just need to adjust these control settings so the last effect i want to demonstrate in this video isn't technically an open effects resolve effect uh, but it works very similar so we have this scene here of the night sky and we might want to adjust the colors in this clip. Generally, you would do that by color grading over on the color tab. But for people who want to get things done quick or don't have any experience doing color grading, one option would be to go up to the color tab and to use auto color. So when you add auto color to the clip, uh, DaVinci Resolve is basically going to take your clip and automatically color grade it to try to make it pop out a little more visually. So if we left click our clip and we go to color and we either click here or use Alt Shift C as a key combination, it's going to take our video clip and it's going to try to enhance the color. So generally I found that it works pretty well. Here is the after of the clip and then here is the before. It's a lot darker. Things don't really stand out as much though it doesn't always work perfectly. So for instance I noticed earlier here at the very beginning of the shot it way overexposes the lighting so it ends up looking bad and I think that might be the case simply because if you try to color grade the whole shot with drastically different lighting then what looks good for one part of the clip may look actually atrocious to another part. Part. So doing this may give you better results with something that's a little more static like this clip from the beginning. So I'll do a Alt Shift C on this clip and you can see that the colors pop out a lot better now than they did just a second ago. So let's switch back to the original clip. It's a little bit dull there but then we do the Shift Alt C and it's much more vivid. It's much brighter. So if you happen to apply the auto color and you later decide that you don't want that and let's assume that you also don't have your history turned on to just go back then what you could do is is go to the color tab so whenever you have auto color added when you're on the color tab you can look at this node and if you see these three bars there that's an indication of the color grading so what we can do to reset that is just to right click on this node and do reset node grade and then we return the clip to its defaults so in a nutshell that is everything about the five essential effects i wanted to show you guys in this video how to do directional blurs radial blurs zoom blurs how to do light rays, how to add a vignette effect, how to use mirrors to reflect your video clip across the timeline preview, and how to use the auto color tool for when you want to have really easy automatic color grading generated by DaVinci Resolve itself. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I hope you guys learned a lot. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.